Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today, before I start my video, I want to show you a gift that someone sent me in the mail. Her name is Barbara Sorrells. She is a sweetheart. And she made me a box that is filled with all kinds of goodies. Now, there is a reason why I am in love with this box other than it being beautiful and what's inside of it. And I will tell you why in a minute. Magic is loose in the world, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, she makes these little embellishments, which I'm guessing, now I may not be right, I'm guessing she cuts the design out with a Cricut machine, decorates it however she wants to decorate it with gems or painting, embossing, whatever. And then she covers them in resin. And these would look magnificent inside of your artwork, your resin artwork, or any type of artwork for that matter. And she knows how much I love my cabochons and my balls. She made me a few of these. And they are just beautiful, all of these things she made. I am really in awe. Now let me explain to you why I absolutely love this gift. That is because just as Barbara does, and she does not know this about me, I don't think, just as Barbara loves to recycle old boxes, so do I. So Barbara's style here is, I would say, magical, fairy themed. Um, that's her style. Fairies, wind, wizards, I'm guessing. Things like that. My theme that I like to do is steampunk which is totally different. <laughs> but, <laughs> so here is a box I wanted to show Barbara that I had made. Steampunk, you use a lot of metal objects. Um, you just mishmash a bunch of stuff. And here is a old dollar store box I had made, bought, had, and I stenciled it. I used some patina paste on it and some different mixed media objects and yeah, so I absolutely love the box, Barbara. Thank you so much. Thank you for always supporting me and sending such nice words to me and just all of it. And all of you too. I I am just, I'm in disbelief of the love I have been shown and it's just great. I love you all. So let's get on with our next video. Okay, so today we're going to do an acrylic pour with primary elements and Arteza paints. So, when using primary elements paints, these paints are all shimmery, metallic looking paints. So, the first thing that you should not do is only use those colors. You need to have an opaque, non-shiny color to go in to balance out your painting or else it's just going to be one big shimmery, I don't want to say mess, but it's, you'd have to have some, an opposite to a, a, a shiny color like that just to make it pop more, we'll say that. So what I've done is I've already mixed up my paints. I'm using white by Liquitex. I'm using, this is the white, whoopsie. That's the white I'm using. 
This blue here, I don't have the packaging, but I will show you a similar package. This is the ultramarine blue from Arteza. Comes in these little packets that are really nice because you can squeeze out every last drop on these. And I do have a link now. I have a link for United States residents and for UK residents. It's listed below in the description. So that's the ultramarine blue. And this is the lemon yellow that I have here also by Arteza, but I don't have the packaging again. So with my paints, with those two paints, I have probably two tablespoons of paint and four tablespoons of Floetrol. That is it. Nothing else. A little tiny bit, maybe like four drops of water and the consistency is perfect. Okay. Now my white, my white, I have this much paint and this much Floetrol. I put in a little bit of water and I put in one tablespoon of satin enamels by Deco Art because I'm going to try a ring pour slash cloudy effect if it happens. If not, it's just gonna be a ring pour. So I'm going to be using this paint to coat the canvas and to layer with my paints inside of, don't tell my husband because he thinks it's for gravy and it's not my gravy thingamajig. <laughs> so I saw it at the store and he said, what do you need that for? I said, oh, I have to make some gravy for Thanksgiving. I'm just getting to it now. <laughs> he said, okay. So Thanksgiving came and went and he said, hey, you never used that gravy separator thing that you bought. I said, oh yeah, I can't find it. And then he came in here the other day and saw it. He said, yep, for gravy, huh? <laughs> so anyway, that's what we're going to use to pour. Now the colors of the primary elements that I'm going to be using, these are mixed with uh, polypore. And polypore is the pouring mixture that you use to make these paints it's like making your own paints at home so you an ounce of this requires uh i'm pretty sure it may be an eighth of a teaspoon of colorant these are the colorants how they come and you just mix those two together and you end up with your own beautiful shimmer paints. So this one here is cranberry. Then this color here is bananas. I am in love with it. It's called Carmen. Now you may think these are odd color choices and they are, but we're going to see what happens with them. And then the last one I'm going to have of the primary elements is called candied yams. And the only way I can describe this is an orangey gold slash bronze, bronze color. It is beautiful. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is put some paint on the canvas. Just a little bit I'm going to put just to help it glide along. And I'm going to wear gloves because I don't want to have to dig paint out of my fingernails for three hours. Okay, so here we go. It's very hard, by the way, for myself and other artists to give you an exact measurement on our mixes because 
we mix our colors differently for every pour that we do. There's a different mixture that we use for um, Dutch pours. There's a different mixture for dips and all of them. So you just have to get in there and practice. And I don't know why I'm using a paintbrush right now because it's a little stupid of me, but let me keep going. I don't know why I grabbed this. I was distracted. <laughs> So yeah, it, you, you have to play and find out what works for you. If your paint is cracking, your mixture is off, paint may be too thick, there may be too much of something in it. What works for me may not work for you, or it may. But anyway, normally... My paints are mixed 25% paint or one quarter paint and three quarters flow trawl. And then I'll just add a squirt of pouring medium in there to help it dry a little bit quicker, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, let's do this. So I have my little cup, which I should have filled first, right? Let me make sure you can see me filling this cup if I put it here. And no, you cannot, so. That was a little ridiculous of me. All right. So I'm gonna pour the paint down the side of the cup. Some white. Um, let me think about this now. I had a plan. I want the yellow to go between those. Okay, so I'm going to do a primary element first. A little bit of yellow. Nope, a little bit of blue. A little bit of Carmen. A little bit of yellow. See how it's layering? A little bit of the candied yams that I just spilled everywhere. A little bit of white. And then we're going to go again. So. Cranberry. Blue. Ultramarine blue. A little bit more. I don't know if you can see that design happening in the cup. It looks like a fractals going out into the yellow, going into the uh, red. So we have that. 
red. Yellow. Candied yams. And we'll top it off with some white. Okay. Now. Now, now, now. If I pour it out the spout, hmm, what's that going to do to the color? I should probably pour it out the side, I would imagine. All right, here we go, right in the center. Oh, the bottom of the cup is really pretty. Okay. Torch. And tilt. Now I know there's a lot of paint on there. Before I start tilting here, though, I'm just going to get this in the center. A little bit like that. And then I'm coming to make sure you guys can see because I forgot to move my tripod over. Oh, yeah, you could see. All right, look at this. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Those colors are so vibrant. I definitely put way too much paint on, but that's all right. I am going to keep going until I get a design that I like.
I'm definitely going to do another one. I want to get some of this paint off of here, though. Okay. Colors when they blend are very interesting. I lost a lot of the blue. I'm just wondering if I should Okay, I'm going to stop right there. So, if I used less paint, I wouldn't have had to tilt so much and lose the definition of it. But the colors are really, really pretty together. So I'm going to clean this up, get it out of the way, and then come back and do another one with less paint. And then I'll show you both at the end. Okay, so now for this one, I'm using a combination of the ultramarine blue and I added a little Prussian blue to it because I did not have enough. So I came up with this color here. And what I'm gonna do different in this one is I'm gonna add a drop of silicone to the blue. One, two, three and to the yellow one drop i'm going to mix it only a couple of times i don't want to fully incorporate it because then the cells will be very small and there's my yellow that has something in it All right so now we're going to do this again this time i'm going to use a cup because my gravy strainer suppose gravy strainer is has paint in it so here's the white i'm not going to put anything on the canvas either white the blue Cranberry. The Carmen. Hello. Candy DMs. Oh, 
white. Repeat with a little bit of each color. This Carmen is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. A couple of people have asked me to do that blindfold challenge. I said, are you out of your cotton mind? Do you know what would happen to me if I tried that? As clumsy as I am, I would definitely be eating that paint. Okay. Alrighty, here we go. These cups suck for uh, doing ring pours. As you can see. <laughs> oh. Lord have mercy. Please. All right, let's stop there. Shall we? <laughs> Reminds me of carnival colors. All right, so let's start a turning, turning and a churning. Jeez, I see a couple of fetuses in my painting here. Wow, look at silicone made a big difference, of course, right? Hmm. It's really interesting colors going on here. Can you tell I'm getting impatient? <laughs> Come on, get off of there.
And this is why I don't like doing this cloudy technique. I just don't care for the patterns. Not that this is cloudy. It's just you got to move it in circles. And to be honest, I just like my good old-fashioned pores. Oh, let's see here. I got a lot of paint left. Let's keep going with this. Look at that cup. Colors are beautiful. You see the inside of that cup? Chocolate milk. That's what I'm making. Mud. All right. One more go around, guys. Looks like all the pretty cranberry was hiding down at the bottom. And I know technically you're supposed to go slow and tilt slow and all that, but Thinking one more time around and whatever it is, it is. Alrighty. Oh, 
don't know what it is, but it is. <laughs> it's something. I'm going to give you a close-up and get you out of here before I hurt your eyeballs anymore. So, I'm going to mix up more of these colors and try just a normal pour. Because as I said, I just don't, even if it comes out good, I'm just not a big fan of the cloudy pour. It's just me. I don't like it. It's not that I don't like it. It's just not my cup of tea. I'm going to show you these really quick because I'm about to run out of time and I have to do another video. Edit it, I mean. And I just want to be able to throw this up, so. We shall see how they dry. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank everybody again for the donations. My PayPal link is listed below. Everything that is sent goes right back into the channel. Look at that cool area there. So, yeah. I appreciate you all so much. And if you want to see a real ring pour done, go check out Melly D. I will link her channel below. She, as far as I'm concerned, is the one that first showed it being done. And she does them amazing. So have a great night, guys. And happy pouring.